A new study finds women in the workplace are not being given the same opportunities as men as they try to move up the corporate ladder. According to the study, companies are making an effort to recruit more women into senior level positions. In fact, that number has jumped from 17% to 21% in five years. But it also finds that women in entry level positions are struggling to make the first step into managerial positions. So here with more on that report is Wall Street Journal reporter Vanessa Fermans. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So I think like some people are going to hear oh, a study about, how, you know, women sort of rising the corporate ladder, glass ceiling, news flash. Yeah, we already know about that. But I think there's something really different about this study that I thought was fascinating that it says it found that the real problem was not about getting women into upper management per se. The problem starts when we're talking about women going from sort of their regular position into the management track, that first step. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've been doing this uh, research in partnership with McKinsey and Lean In now for five years, so we really have a good longitudinal sense of what the data is showing us right. and every year what we've seen is that it's at that first step up to those manager roles that women fall back the most it's 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 the steepest fallback mm -hmm. and so you have men and women coming into the entry level workforce in roughly equal numbers but by the time they get into management those very first manager roles men are already outnumbering women two to one, nearly two to one. Right, so by then, all right, the, the, already the pool is smaller, right. and there has been sort of an active push to get women into upper management, but it's focusing on the higher sort of levels. Right, yes, um, companies are very aware of what's happening at the top of their pipelines, um, and as a result, they are focusing their efforts on grooming, cultivating those senior women who are super high potential into those C-suite roles. Right. Um, the, so that is a bright spot. It shows that when companies put their mind to it, they can affect change. Um, the, but the other issue is it's the law of low numbers. I mean, these are we're talking about a pretty small select group. Um, so you can change the numbers at the top, but you're really not changing what's happening fundamentally throughout your organization. Mm -hmm. So then what's the problem? What's sort of stymieing women from going from sort of the worker level to a management track? Yeah, well, what's really interesting to us is that what we found was it's not because they're not ambitious. Um, in the data, it showed that men and women are asking for promotions at the same rate. Um, over the past year, 25% of the men and women surveyed, and this is nearly 70,000 people, um, asked for promotions. Um, they're also not, women aren't leaving the workforce in greater numbers than men. Right. You know, this idea that women take a break from their careers for right their around children this time. Or whatever. Yeah. They're not doing that. Okay. Um, and so it's, So they are leaning in. They are leaning in. Right, they're not, you know, pivoting to yes. their family. Yes, Okay, exactly. so what's going on? Well, I think a lot of it has to do, I mean, it's a confluence of things. Right. So um, some of it is bias, um, which is very insidious, very implicit. Um, you know, you have lower level managers that aren't going through those, the same paces as senior managers are in terms of being sure to recruit and promote and think about diversity on their teams. Mm -hmm. So there is, you know, that unconscious implicit bias. People tend to hire people who are like themselves. Mm -hmm. um, Part of it is that, in many cases, women are not positioned in the in the same roles often that men are. The, the, those high, those those springboard hot jobs right. that propel you to the next move. Right. So there's that. Yeah. Um, and is, is there a problem sort of finding a sponsor, someone to sort of bring you along and yes. show you the ropes? Because there's you know there's a lot about rising in the ranks that you know from maybe books you read or you mm -hmm. know how to things that you read that you google and then there's a lot of sort of unspoken rules right there's there's um, you know this great catchphrase it's not who you it's not what you know it's who you know who knows what you what you can do right so um, you know, people talk a lot about mentoring, how important that is, but mentoring is really like someone giving you informal guidance. Oh, you should do this, you should do that. Yeah. A sponsor is someone who's actually championing you behind the scenes in the room where it happens. Right. And um, men, it's shown inherently find these relationships yeah. a bit more naturally, a bit more organically than women. 
Um, so, but, but studies have shown that the, the sponsorship relationship is so important and companies where, which have really put this into place have yeah. seen results. So, and the thing about having diversity in your management all the way sort of up the line is that it's not just the right thing to do, right. it's actually good business. Right, and, and that is really why companies say this is a priority for them. Um, it is definitely not about just doing the right thing or altruism. It's, um, you know, there's a, a growing body of research that links diversity in your workforce to more innovation, better profits, mm -hmm. and, and companies are aware of that. But the, the problem is there's still a disconnect between the execution and that belief in the business case. Uh, yeah. There still isn't the same kind of energy being put into that as it is into, say, meeting your t sales targets. Uh, well, Vanessa, it's a great article. I encourage people to check out the Wall Street Journal and check out Vanessa Furman's article. Thank you. Thank you.